magic wood Here in my secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun This is Gino from The Secret Kindergarten. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio, the number one listener-supported radio station in the whole world. So please help support our efforts and airtime by visiting the station's donation section on our website, revolution.radio. Please do. Welcome back to The Secret Kindergarten. I'm your host, Gino. And I just want to say hello. Hello, hello, hello. Have you heard of the Hello Game? Let me tell you about the Hello Game. We take turns saying hello to one another and (laughs) noticing the color of each other's eyes. To help us focus and practice making eye contact. Oh, that makes me feel all funny. That makes me feel awkward. (laughs) When we look into someone's eyes, we sometimes feel strong feelings. We might feel shy, embarrassed, excited, or happy. And we might feel different every time we do it. Let's try it, okay? And my cat Mimi is here, so I'm going to say, Hello, Mimi. I'm looking at your eyes. Your eyes look green. And I think Mimi wants a treat, but she can't have one because I'm busy. (laughs) Now you try. Do you have anyone with you that you can try this with did you try it how did it feel well for me it felt normal because it was my cat Mimi but it feels different when I do that with a human so next time I see a human (laughs) I'm gonna do that (laughs) And you can play that at the dinner table before you have dinner. Or you can play that when you have breakfast. You can do it anytime when you see another person. And it's very good practice. All right. You might feel shy. I, you know what? I actually feel shy. You might even want to cover your eyes. <laughs> Especially if it's a new person. It's actually quite hard to look another person in the eye and say what you see. It's very hard. But I know you kids can do it. And I know you young kids out there are good at it. Just need to practice. And that's it. And that's called the Hello Game. (laughs) That's good for everybody to play every day. All right. Now it's time for some music. With thanks to Nancy Stewart of nancymusic.com. Boats 
peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? First, the farmer sows his seed, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Next, the farmer waters the ground, watches the sun shine all around, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Next, the farmer hoes the weeds, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Last, the farmer harvests his seeds, stands up tall and takes his ease, stamps his feet and claps his hands and turns around to view his land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Do it. 
Let's read a story. This story is called Susie, the Chooser. The nursery was a sight. Mrs. Newton's accustomed eyes surveyed a dishevelled scene. Susie had been having a theosophical school for a large and rather mixed family. The nursery floor was strewn with teddy bears of all sizes and ages, several rabbits likewise, a varied collection of dolls, some in the pink of perfection, some looking fearfully overworked and bearing indelible signs of ardent affection. I haven't time to tell you all of the things that lay on that floor. But it was very plain indeed that nothing had been picked up all day. Susie, called Mrs. Newton, I want you to tidy your nursery before supper. Susie was having an exciting race on her tricycle with the little girl who lived across the street. The thought of going indoors and doing anything as uninteresting as putting away toys took all the joy out of the evening for Susie. Yes, mother, she replied promptly. But she didn't go promptly. Oh, no. She waited for just one more spin up and down and one more spin up and down until she was called in to supper before she knew where the time had gone to. After supper, while it was still light, they all went out to see a new rose that was in bloom. Susie lingered in the garden. The sky was still in a sunset glow. The evening was very lovely. And Susie thought of her nursery with a shudder of dislike. At last she went in. Someone had turned on the light and it glared piteously down on the wreckage. Susie could just reach the switch. She did so in haste, and slamming the door, she dashed into the living room, kissed Mummy and Daddy goodnight in a hurry, and soon was in bed, and not long after was asleep. The people moving around looked like shadows. The sky was grey and dead. Everyone looked dull and sad. They groped in the gloomy dusk and spoke in hoarse voices from which the warmth of life seemed to have gone. Susie heard some of them saying that something had gone wrong with the sun. They did not know whether they would ever see it again. It had somehow gone out of its right track and had disappeared in the great unknown spaces of the sky. You know, Susie was quite little, only six, and she thought the sun moved around the earth because it looks as if it does. Everyone was very sad, as I have said, and some of the children began to cry and say that they wished the nice warm sun would come back. Susie thought of the glory of the last sunset she had seen, and she tried dreadfully hard to swallow something that was sticking in her throat, and wiped away very fast something wet that was rolling down her cheeks, because she feared that never again would she see anything so beautiful. Next thing she knew, she was in her own beloved little garden, and what do you think? There were no pretty pansies, roses... Canterbury Bells, nor any of her favourites to be seen, nor any that were not her favourites, for that matter. All the plants in the garden were growing with their roots sticking up in the air, and the flowers were buried in the earth. Susie picked up her spade and began to dig. She worked so hard and dug such a deep hole, but the flowering end seemed to get further and further away all the time. Then the scene changed suddenly again, the way it does in dreams. Because I know that you have guessed that this was a dream. Susie was standing down by the sea, watching the waves as she always loved to do. The sky was still black and there was a crowd of sad, anxious people hurrying to and fro. 
The great breakers crashed down on the sand as if they were angry with it and wanted to hurt it and then swept up, up, up to the shore, spreading white foam along the beach as far as the eye could see. Higher and higher swept the waves. Men hurried around with sand in sacks. Then at last a man who held a watch in his hand cried out in a loud, frightened voice, The tide has not turned! The tide has not turned! It has been coming in for long beyond the right time. This has never happened in the world before. We shall all be drowned! Fly for your lives! Fly! All turned and ran far inland, but the sea kept coming in and pounding just behind them. Susie heard someone say, It seems as if there is no law and order in the universe. She was so tired, and at last, when she felt as if she could not take another step and would have to let the waves overtake her, she opened her eyes and found herself all under the covers of her own little bed. She lay and looked out of the window at a large bright star in the heaven, and she thought, Oh, how glad I am that there is law and order in the universe. I wish I had tidied my nursery last night. That was a moment of choice. When I turned out the nursery light, and left my toys, and I chose the crooked path. I will straighten it up first thing in the morning. She did too. And sometime I will tell you more about Susie. Let's listen to some music! By Nancy Stewart. From nancymusic.com! ground I am dancing around with my rainbow colors dancing around and around I am jumping up and down with my rainbow colors jumping jumping up and down I am jumping up and down with my rainbow colors jumping Jumping up and down I can reach up high And twirl them around Then twirl them slowly to the ground I am jumping up and down With my rainbow colors Jumping, jumping up and down I am swaying back and forth With my rainbow colors Making a rainbow in the sky I am swaying back and forth with my rainbow colors Making a rainbow in the sky I can reach up high and twirl them around Then twirl them slowly to the ground I am swaying back and forth with my rainbow colors Making a rainbow in the sky I am making a rainbow in the sky Little mouse, little mouse, where did you go? Are you in the red house? I don't know. On a moonlit night when the stars are out, there are nocturnal animals all about. Ooh, 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 what do I see? A wise old Stars are out, there are not 
To the end of another half hour of the Secret Kindergarten. The best radio show for young children out there. And I'm your host Gino and thanks so much for listening and remember. Remember lots of things. <laughs> I know you'll remember. It's good to look people in the eye. And it's good to start doing that when you're a kid. <laughs> Because <laughs> then you can do it when you're growing up. Boy, does it take courage to do that. And I know you're all brave out there. And Susie the Chooser taught us that it's good to tidy up. <laughs> it's good to do the right thing at the right time when it needs to be done. And that puts the whole universe in order. Wow. But don't worry, I'll help you tidy up if you need help. And that's it. So thanks so much for listening. I love you. Bye.